firing this baby on. Got a couple of uh, studs into the head. So, just got news there's a big build happening here today. So let's go through, interrupt Ben, and yeah, this could be a good video that you'll want to see about what goes into all these builds. What's happening, Ben? I've heard someone's having a big build. Oh yes. Take this off. Let's turn this compressor off. It's a bit loud, down, isn't it? Lots of noise. Yeah, we've got. Um, Basically, we've got one of our 425 packages on the go. Um, customers basically bought it on the website. We'll put the uh, link below in the, in the description. Um, but this is the beginnings. Um, when you, if you look at the package, it doesn't actually include engine removal or painting or anything like that. So just be aware if you ever need uh, anything like this doing just make sure you give us a shout to so kind of what package has this customer chosen then right so he's basically chosen the 425 package off the website but he's bought that direct that would include um a forge bottom end yeah which is with wise co and k1 internals um, now that would be to standard size obviously providing your block is found to be suitable yeah it would also include block mod um, and a reconditioned cylinder head basically which is you know skimmed cleaned pressure tested valves them oil seals yeah now it's unlikely these days if i'm honest that you're going to find a bottom end that is suitable for a standard 83 mil build they're just they've got to an age now where they're you know they're not within tolerance so most, all, of, the, most of the times we do get them sent away don't we for some of the builds to be done? Pretty much every forge build we do these days is an 83.5 build, yeah, which is obviously engine out job. Um, obviously, it's not necessarily, you know, it's not always a bad thing. It, yes, it's more costly, so, you know, give us a shout if you need a price on anything like that doing, but while the engine's out, it can be cleaned up, it can have a coat of paint, and, you know, it just makes a much nicer looking job at the end of it, to be fair. Is there a reason for it going a bigger ball? Yeah, but basically, so the cylinders, obviously, you know, they wear out. Yeah. Piston rings, you know, going up and down, pistons are going up and down, rings going up and down, wearing, they wear out. It's not just the rings that wear out. The bores do actually wear out and they go oval. Now, to make them round again, obviously, some machining's got to be involved. Now, sometimes, right, if they're, if they're close enough, they can be honed and you can get them back to round which means you can get, you know, achieve the correct ring gap ultimately. But it doesn't happen very often anymore, I'll be honest with you. Unless you find a really low mileage engine, you're going to find that they're going to be outside, they're going to be above the upper tolerance um, of, of being able to be honed. So you've got to go 83.5. Yeah. So what I think is going to happen in this video is I'll probably sit with Ben, watch him do the build, and I'm going to ask questions that you lot might want to know. And um, yeah, we'll just crack on from there. Let's carry on and see how we get on. So we're going to clean this block up now, ready for it to be painted. A lot of you are probably going to ask why we don't go down the lines of vapour blasting and, and the like that, that a lot of people do choose. Now, over the years, we've gone through so many different options. We've used every version of cleaning you can possibly ever think of and at the end of the day we find the wire wheel on the die grinder get the block all the um, corrosion and, and dirt off the block um, like you can see this is starting to get there now if you get all that loosened off and we get them in our hot jet clean at the end of it and it's as good as uh, as result as any especially when it comes to getting painted you just need a nice clean service surface all right, I, I appreciate the vapour blasting might give you a nicer look if it's going in in its raw state. However, what we have found is that um, you, you tend to spend more time cleaning all the media out of um, all the galleries. Yeah, okay. And if you don't get all that out properly, 
you know, you're in trouble. In, in the future, could that wear away internal parts of the engine? Yeah, it's it's nice. It's like you imagine putting. Well, you don't want any kind of dirt, grit, anything like that in you know in your oil, especially yeah. not even in the coolant. It's not ideal. But if there's any in the oil galleries and anything like that, it's yeah, it's not going to do you any favors. No, not at all. Especially when you're spending this kind of money on an engine build. Um, you know, we found, like I say, we've come back. This is how we started doing them, and we've come full circle, and this is how we do them now, and that's probably how it's going to stay, if I'm honest. Yeah. So, just so you lot know, where we are now is actually the dirty room. We will be going, where the engine's built later on, it is actually in a clean room, but as you can see, this is the dirty room. They are separated for, obviously, to keep the new build yeah this this clean. just literally where you know we do this kind of cleaning here we do porting and polishing and um, we do all the first stages of cleaning of everything in here and then they'll go through our jet clean and then they'll be taken out uh, you know they'll be painted once they're painted and dried and everything it'll be mounted on the stand in the clean engine building room Just want to interrupt you again, Ben. We didn't actually, uh, well, I didn't actually ask you what actually else is in this 425 package. All right, okay. About the block. Yeah, okay. So, so the package itself, um, in its kind of basic form, is uh, like I mentioned before, the forge bottom end with Wiseco K1, um, the refurbished or rebuilt cylinder head with valves and oil seals done um, that's as far as it goes really engine wise obviously like i said before that you know the package price on the website is for the job to be done in the car um, it's a refurbished head it includes a block mod always every job we do every time a head comes off the car if it's got no shims in it's having a block mod regardless of what yeah. the job is yeah so there's that then obviously um, RS Turbo, which is a brand new off-the-shelf unit that we use in the package every time, including the oil feed, uh, return, the the relevant sort of silicon uh, hoses to, to join into the existing um, hot side boost pipe. And then you've got the RS crossover, RS MAF sensor, MAF sensor uh, the wiring needed to convert to RS MAF, RS MAP sensor, and we clone the ECU over onto base RS software. 425 is basically a stage uh, four plus yeah. Revo conversion. So the ECU will be converted over to RS base software. We'll, yeah. So then obviously our tooling will recognize the car as, a, an, as an RS. So it'll be flashed with a Revo four plus map. Um, it'll, be, it'll include 750cc injectors to suit. Um, the, all the other sensors, map math, like I just mentioned, um, crossover, uh, RS, it'll be an open cone style kit. Um, what else have we got? Engine turbo software. Uh, fuel pump, the in tank pump will be upgraded um, to suit. And. I think off the top of my head, that's... That, so does this package have to run Revo software or can it be combined with another No, I mean, it, no. The package we've got is just something we put together um, many years ago. No, it can, you know, it can run any version of RS mapping, yeah. anything you like. Obviously, if we're doing the job you know, it, there's no problem with it getting mapped elsewhere, I suppose, but you know, it, it would be a completely tailored package then. Yeah. You'd have to take obviously the price of the software and everything out of it. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is that the stuff that isn't included, I suppose I should say, which would obviously would be a normal kind of, you know, your three inch turbo back decat or sports cat exhaust system, and an intercooler really they're they're the only kind of two things that aren't um that aren't included that and it's mainly because this package tends to be an upgrade for somebody who's already stage two stage two yeah yeah so they've got a full 
um, a turbo back exhaust at three inch. It's got you know it's got to be at three inch yeah. turbo back, and also they've normally got um, a decent enough intercooler. Now sometimes, like unfortunately for this guy, the cars come in. He believed that his car was a hundred percent ready for the package. Now when we've had the car in, had a good look over it, you know it turns out yes it's got an exhaust system, but it isn't three inch it's two and a half all the way and it's had you know pieces modified here and there so the exhaust isn't suitable so we have had to go for an upgrade on the exhaust side of things um, and also he had a very small kind of stage one yeah. intercooler that so you know, isn't really realistically going for a build like this you don't want to go half-hearted into it you want to go with the proper equipment proper hardware that's suited for the build well, definitely. I think the, the, the main thing is going to the expense of having a forged engine done with a brand new RS turbo and not being able to utilise, you know, the build yeah. as a result of not having some other suitable hardware, I suppose, True. is the, you know, but, you know, you have really got to bear that in mind when you, you know, when you look at the price of the 425 package, you need to consider, have you got, the right starting point yeah this car as well uh, he's had to have a clutch included you know so it starts to it all starts to mount up, mount up yeah. but would using obviously the you said the exhaust system that this customer had on the intercooler would that have affected this build would it be like it, yeah. in the future it's going to cause more damage or? Um, not necessarily damage but with you know if you haven't if Basically, how we put it across was they're not suitable for the package, essentially. Yeah. We can do the package, it's not a problem, but we can't tune it to its full potential. Yeah. Simple as that. Ben, you seem to be doing some prepping of the block. By the looks of it, you're now on the edge. What's happening? Well, I've got it all, uh, got the valve stripped out of it, valve stem oil seal stripped out of it. We've got all the carbon cleaned out of all the ports and everything. Um, we've got the outside cleaned up with a wire wheel. Um, we're just going to skim the, the face of the cylinder head now. It'll be ready for a wash. It'll be on back on the stand then for a full rebuild with new seals. So when you're skimming this head, mm -hmm. how much do you actually take off of it or is it very little? It's very, very little, but it depends on obviously the state of the head. If it come off a, a good running car with no um, heating issues, then it'll be very, very little. If it's had cracked line uh, head gasket issues, it'll be more. It's difficult to say, you know, I can't, you can't predict that, but you've just keep cutting until you've got a, an equal even surface yeah. right across would you check for warping the heads and that yeah with straight edge and before and generally but this is a refurbished head of kind of unknown origin i would say it's come out of stock so it'll be getting done regardless awesome <coughs> well, then you, what you do it with literally just going to set set the machine up to start cutting first 
You just hear it starting to catch there now. So I'll just take notice of, of the reed in there and I'll back it off so that I can uh, move the head away now. So what are these sets to? Are they millimetres or micro? It's thousandths of an inch, mate. Thousands of yeah, it's dead old machine, so... Um, plus, uh, everyone tends to work on um, Imperial when you're working on engines, to be yeah. fair. So that's done Ben, done a few passes with that, I take it's going for cleaning now is it? Yeah we'll uh, chuck it in the hot wash now, get it all nice and shiny and then we'll uh, be ready for masking it up and chucking some paint at it. So we've seen you clean the block, get that ready and prepped, yeah. done the head, you're taking the valves out and nearly enough time for building I take it? Yeah we'll paint it, we'll paint the We'll paint the bottom end at least to start with um, and then we'll get that mounted on the bench and we'll start, we'll gap the rings, get the bottom end built up and uh, then we'll, it'll just be whilst the oil seals, valves back in, rebuild the head and put that back on and you know we'll, we'll, we'll be close to a long motor then. Awesome, tidy. So Ben, what's happening? We've seen you clean the block, do the head, skim the head. Looks like we're having a bit of paint now, is it? That's it. It's, uh, I've just put the cradle on loosely. Um, we've got a spare sump that we keep for painting, spare water pump, a spare uh, oil pump and an old gasket we've taped up along with a load of other bungs just to save, you know, save time with masking. Um, yeah, we're going to throw some etch primer on it. We'll get some silver on, and then we'll be ready to go on the stand and do some uh, do some rings. So I do. So Ben, how many coats does this normally take? And really, this primer probably two or three coats of primer, or you know, difficulty is you know because there's so many nooks and crannies, it's hard to put one decent even coat on without things start without it starting to run. So yeah. you've just got to mess about a bit really and just try and do bits and bobs. But two or three coats of this probably, the paint it really depends on the colour. But again, probably similar two or three coats of each really. Let's do a bit of YouTube magic. Go on then, just like that. Looking good mate, fair play. So what's next then? Is it just a building, is it? Demask it now, we'll get it on the stand, we'll uh, get the rings, uh, ring gaps measured up, build up the rods and pistons, um, and then it's just a case of building the bottom end then. Just got some couple of, you know, the valves to oil seals and, and the valves to put back into the head. We'll give that a quick coat of paint along with the rocker cover and uh, tomorrow we'll have a long motor. So Ben, looks Hi like mate. I'm interrupting you here at an important stage. Yeah, well, nothing new there, is it? <laughs> oh, we're getting on. All right, mate. Um, done the ring gaps. Blocks paint. Oh, you've already shown the block paint, haven't you? Done the ring gaps now. Um, just going to put the rods, uh, assemble the rods and pistons. We'll put the crank in and we'll drop the rods and pistons in. Is there a certain process of this that you do the same every single time or...? How do you mean? So, you've got, I can see from there, you've got it all numbered. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, because obviously the ring gaps have been measured to each specific cylinder, yeah? So, yeah. You don't, you know, there's no good measuring the ring gaps in like cylinder one, for example, and putting them on a piston that you don't know where it's going and them ending up 
somewhere else because obviously you, you know you might your ring gaps will just be all over the place then so obviously number the pistons before you start you keep them in order of where they're going in the block and you, you know that your ring gaps are, are going to be right then every time is that because there's a variation in the size of the balls or they is can it be, they can be fractional yeah but also you know there might be some slight sort of differences in the rings from the factory as well you know you can't guarantee that everything is 100 percent accurate across the board can you so you know you just go to each cylinder so this re really is a vital part of the building Absolutely. That's yeah yeah critical yeah yeah tidy critical. see what's done then let's go obviously we're not showing too much of this because we have previously done the full you know engine build video which uh, we'll probably try and put a link in a somewhere yeah and a um, link in the description yeah and uh yeah, so you can watch sort of it a little bit more in depth on the full video, but I'm still going to interrupt you and ask you a few questions. I know you are. I'm used to it. So lots of crank finally in Ben. Yeah man. Loads of lube and anaerobic flange sealant. Nothing else ever. No RTB, no nothing. Anaerobic flange sealant. We all love a bit of lube. <laughs> so I hear that these well cranks are good for 950 to a thousand brick. Is that right, Ben? Um 950 is where uh, they tend to let go just ask simon <laughs> so unless you go in serious power you, you're never going to need to upgrade the, the crank here no, not unless you like to. if you're going over and sort of 900 000, that mark yes crank but i mean We've got what Nicks and Terry's, you know, seven and eight hundred plus horsepower cars, standard cranks, no problems, no problems at all. Awesome. How many actual cars are there in the UK that are over that power? Two, I think, maybe three, but there's two I can, you know, that jump straight to mind. Yeah, it might be more. I don't really follow the scene, to be honest. Old school, are you, mate? Eh? Old school, are you? <laughs> see, I see, like, cars all day. When I get home, I just want to switch off. And drink gin. It's all about the AU vodka. Yeah, man. <laughs> if you're watching this, guys, what we're doing, Ben, because it's like a tedious part of the job by the looks of it. Just putting the head back together, done all the valves and oil seals. I've done the uh, exhaust side valves, that's all done. Just got the intake valves to do now, and um, I think we'll be ready to bolt this head onto that. Lovely forge bottom end over there. Nice. So what are these? They're the collets. They hold. Um, well, they hold the valves in basically. If you so when you put the valve valve in, you put a spring over the top, and you've got this washer that's got that's tapered inside. Then obviously you've got grooves in the valve. So when we actually compress that spring down, you can see the valve pops up, and there's grooves in the valve. And these collets have got matching little grooves on the inside. I can pick that up on the camera. Yeah. No. <laughs> Don't get you a proper camera fo camera photographer or something. Yeah, sorted. Uh, you can sort of see them. Yeah. Anyway, so they go either side of the valve into the grooves. You release it, and the the tapered part of that washer basically pushes these inwards. It's quite a fiddly job, then, really. That's what it is a little bit fiddly, yeah. 
I use a little bit of uh, a little bit of grease. Rather you than me. Stick them. Just stick them on like that. And there. Uh, get them in place. And. Then when you release, it just catches. So. Like being, like being an operating theatre. There we are. Scalpel. <laughs> Ooh, gasket's on, Ben. It is. Time for the head. I'm nearly at a full motor. Nearly there. Exciting times. Yeah, it won't be long now. Just get this talk down and the cams in and everything, see if we can get it um, timed up and start putting some bits on it and, I don't know, get it in the car tomorrow I reckon. Yeah. Got a built engine Ben. Lovely, shiny, long motor. Nice isn't it? Two rides it is. Yeah. The customer's going to be happy with that mate. Yeah, looks good. Happy with that. Right. Brand fire new. Focus RS Turbo Charge U Turbo Look at that beauty I can unbox in this Wow, nice there uh... Lovely. Very nice. Very nice. Looking nice that Ben. Got my new gasket on there now, look, just firing this baby on. Got a couple of uh, studs into the head ready first, so I can just hang that in place and Bob your uncle lad. Bob your uncle. Ah uh, yeah, look at this. They've put a nice big cap on the oil drain now. <laughs> They used to send them out. They used to send them out with like a little tiny cap, you know, um, in the drain hole. Yeah. And I've known people before now put the return pipe on over the blank. <laughs> when you start them up, they pour smoke out like a steam train. Like, well, not, well, that's steam, obviously. But yeah, they pour smoke out like nobody's business. And it's because obviously the oil's got nowhere to return. Makes a right mess. So, if you're talking about trains, Ben. Yeah. If an electric train is doing 100 mile an hour that way and there's a 100 mile an hour wind going the opposite way, what way does the steam go? Well, there's no steam on the electric train. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, the engine's ready, Ben. <coughs> in enough there? Yeah, we're going in a minute. Put this clutch on yeah. and the uh, box on and we'll start lifting it in. What clutch have we gone for? RTS, is an it? an RTS twin friction on this one. Um, another sort of add-on to the package, just purely because, um, well, <laughs> while, it's, while you're out, it's like saves him the labour later on, and obviously going 425, his original clutch just wasn't going to cut it. So, yeah, gone for this twin friction job from, from RTS. Good choice. But the engine is looking awesome. Nice new turbo, RS turbo fitted, nice and shiny, <coughs> engine's looking mega, you've done well mate. Thanks. <laughs> so all it is now is get the engine in and hopefully the customer can have, have it back running after it's been running. So taking the old exhaust off then. Might Good. as well. Might as well gets the downpipe out of the way and that. I mean, I left it all in to get the engine out just for kind of quickness at the time, but get it all off. It's got to come off anyway now before it's run up anyway. It's having a turbo back section 59 by Mongoose because um, this back end is a well, it's a bit of a hybrid of the original with a D res and then a modified back box that's been added into it. So we're just tidying it all up. He's having a brand new section 59 all the way through so 
Is that because of the flow? It's not very good. Yeah, four two five package. You know the, the original, the original size exhaust, no good. You know, obviously everyone recommends three inch, even on a stage two on an ST. So when you go to RS and then go all the way to four plus as well, it's yeah, you need yeah. that flow. Yeah. Now some people go better with the exhaust, bigger diameter, but there's no real need for it. Is not there, not really? at this kind of level, no. Not at this level at all. There's a few four inch systems knocking around, but it just would be over the top for this, that's for sure. Yeah. So we have it. Engine's going in, mate. It is. At last. Now, people watching this video are probably going to think, bloody hell, Ben's quirk, he's done it in like a few hours. But realistically, how many days has this taken, Ben? We start to finish. Um, I think like three, is it? Yeah. Working, I think, is it? About three days. About three on the car, I think, yeah. With, you know, with the cleaning, painting, building the engine, everything, yeah. I think it's about three. So it's quite a lengthy process, to be fair, but. Yeah. Definitely worth it in the end. I'm sure the customer's going to be happy. I know I would be. Easily pleased you are, aren't you, Lee? To be yeah. Fair. So, is there anything people need to be careful of, Ben, when fitting an engine? This mount, especially. Just you've got to make sure that that the, that the bracket is dead straight and lined up before you start putting that bolt in because it's a soft cast alloy mounting and the cross thread or you rip the, you know, the cross thread or if you over tighten them you rip the threads out of them and you'll find um, one day when you're going down the road the engine will actually drop out of the mount straight onto the drive shaft and make lots of noise and lots of damage. You know what I mean? <laughs> If that's happened to anybody, uh, yeah, I've seen it before. I mean, it's not, it's not like catastrophic. It knocks the boot off the CV and it makes a hell of a noise. That's for sure. But it's scary. Let's hope that doesn't happen on track of us with the Fiesta. <laughs> what are we doing, Ben? Big injectors, isn't it? Bigger injectors. What injectors are these then? 750s mate. 750s. Revo 4 Plus software. <laughs> what power should this customer see then from this? 420 probably. 420. Nice. Yeah. Do we know what it was before? Uh, no. Well, I don't know what the customer might do, but. Looking at the spec, I would say probably sub 300. So, big gains then, really? Yeah. Gonna feel a big difference. And it's gotta be said, the engine does look awesome. So, a few rails going in, Ben. New injectors. I've heard the customer's having a new Planum as well, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's, uh, he's added a uh, nice shiny black AS Plenum to the package as well. Time for the plenum, Ben. Yeah. I think all we really got to do then is just put the crossover and that on and just uh, convert the ECU over. We'll be ready for rocking. So, when you convert the ECU over, will it go to stock RS? Stock RS first, yeah. <coughs> And then what has the customer chosen? Well, 4 Plus. Revo 4 Plus. Revo 4 Plus. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you have said that. Part, part, part of the uh, 425 package. Is there anything people should know when fitting these in the plenums at home? Yeah, read the instructions that AirTech give you with them because there's a little bracket that um, protects the fuel rail pressure sensor which basically the plenum doesn't fit on properly with and what you find people doing is trying to put all the bolts into the plenum like this now and because it fouls on the bracket on the end the, the hole doesn't line up properly and when they tighten them up they actually snap 
the end of the lower inlet manifold yeah. clean off. So, so obviously we're ready to start it, is it Ben? Yeah, it's all in, it's all primed up. All done and dusted. Fire off, straight off the button now, first time. Go on, let's have a listen. Engine's done, mate. It sure is. Anything else to say? Anything that you want to say to the viewers that about engine builds? Yeah. So obviously, if you're liking uh, our videos, just as usual, give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out massively. Um, and yeah. Well, we'll see you next time. I'm going to crack on, get this uh, Revo map flashed on here, and we can get on with some testing. See you next time.